Well, after a particularly strong sermon on tithing, <clears throat> Pastor Johnson was surprised to see Henry, an old bachelor farmer, waiting for him after worship. <clears throat> Pastor, said Henry, I know I haven't given as much to God as I should have, but I've decided to tithe this year. God be praised, said Pastor Johnson. May I ask what changed your heart, Henry? He said, well, <clears throat> your sermon got me to thinking that with the price of everything rising so much, I'd better commit to 10% before God raises the cost to 15 <laughs> I know. Okay. Those of you that are here for the first time, just forgive me. You know, this is part of our... <clears throat> so, this is our second week in what I'm calling our Prosperity Summit. Um, and I'm calling it a summit because I had this vision, you know, of a summit. And, and as, our, as, we, as we climb a summit, it's like it's symbolic of our, our consciousness being raised. And so... Last week, if you were here, um, what we did to lay the foundation of expanding our prosperity consciousness, well, we participated in a releasing ritual um, where we got to reflect on our beliefs that we hold about prosperity. And we got to reflect on if those beliefs are serving us in what we define as abundance for us. So we got to explore what is abundance and what is it for us. And hopefully this past week you have felt the blessing of that release. Yeah, because as, as we release, we fill the space with what's true. And so we discussed our true nature last week. And you hear this a lot here, but it's just a reminder, especially around this conversation of abundance, that you are source energy. That within us is the energy that creates worlds. That's what you are. It's what you're made of. And we talked about being a divine being and what that means. And that means that you have available to you infinite possibilities because there is that that you are that is infinite, that is creative, that is divine substance. And so we talked about the reality that we are whole no matter what the circumstance and that we're love worthy and deserving no matter what. And after the service, if you remember, I invited people to stay after and we could just have a conversation or just discuss what the message was to you and to ask any questions if you wanted to. And I invite you to do that again today. After I'll stay at the back door a little while. And, and if you'd like to get together and just talk about what you hear today, I would love that. Um, and with permission, um, I'm going to share um, what came up last week in our post-service conversation. I just thought it was so powerful. Um, someone asked me, is all this prosperity teaching, is this a first world teaching? You know what I mean by that? You know, is, is, it, is it just for us that, you know, are living in this first world that have all these opportunities available to us? Um, is, it, is prosperity and infinite possibility something only those of us who live in first world are privileged to experience? I thought it was an incredibly valuable question. And so... This is what came to me um, to share from my heart in response to that question. And I've thought about it too. Regardless of what's happening in our outer world, the infinite reality we are, that is everything, does not change. Um, what is true for us in this room is true for everyone. We are all divine, we're all whole, and we're all worthy. Nothing changes that. And I was reminded of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you're familiar with Maslow, right? Okay. So, you know, when we don't have food, shelter, water, or safety readily available to us, that becomes our primary focus, right? And so, we, you know, we're geared towards survival. And so in those moments, 
um, when people are experiencing that, they typically are not um, excited about um, treasure mapping or mind movies, right? Um, so that, and also we get to look in this conversation what prosperity means. You know, often when I hear conversations about third world countries, um, they are often referred to as poor and impoverished. But have you ever talked to people living in a third world country that see anything, I mean, that see something that is completely different than that perception? And I was reminded when I went to Costa Rica, um, the group that I went with did not stay on the west um, coast, which is where most people go. We went to the east coast, which is a little less developed. And one of our leaders um, had visited that area often and had befriended a local person. And this local man um, that was friends with our leader um, invited uh, our leader and a few of us from our group over to his home. And, you know, in, you know, coming from a first world perspective, you know, looking at this home, it looked very primitive and hardly livable. But this beautiful soul was so proud to invite our group into his home and to feed us a piece of fruit from his property. It was, it was a beautiful expression of prosperity. And so I'm also, and I'm still working with this, and I'm really grateful for the person that asked this question. Um, I was also reminded of the scripture in Luke 12 that says, too much is given, much is required. And that leads to the topic for today. You know, what is the big deal in prosperity teachings is here we are in this first world. And I know we all have our circumstances. We're all working in our life with our journey and whatever opportunities we have for growth. But the thing that I, I just that really came to me was what, trans, what practices transform our experience of prosperity? And it always comes back to giving. It comes back to giving because giving is about allowing the infinite flow to flow forth from you to someone or something instead of the focus being on doing something, you know, for someone. And this transformative emphasis on this practice is on where we give from. Because we've often been taught in prosperity that when we give, we get bounty in return. Right? Even the scripture today in the Daily Word said that. But often, that's where we focus. And Eric Butterworth, you know, my favorite unity teacher said this. To know what we give from and therefore consciously give way to the divine process that we give from. The divine process of giving is, is entails a flow from within out and from knowing what we are as a foundation of giving. There are two kinds of giving. Okay, so this divine process is when we give from. Okay, but there's two kinds of giving. There's outer-centered giving that ultimately can deplete the giver. Giving that's what that's inner-centered, however, blesses the giver continuously. Outer-centered giving is when we give out of a sense of duty and burden and obligation and we see lack. Outer giving is ego-based because it comes from, it, it, what comes with it is an attachment to how it's received. And if we don't get acknowledged or seen or appreciated, there can be hurt and resentment around that. Outer-centered giving is often withheld because there's a sense of sometimes, because of the, it, we can be depleted, there's a sense that there's not enough. On the other hand, inner-centered giving is based on seeing an opportunity to give and responding to it, not from lack, but from the knowing of all sufficiency and infinite supply. Inner-centered giving is impersonal. The focus is not on what's being given or the person or the circumstance, but on the love and joy from which it is given. There's never a sense of depletion in inner-centered giving. And from inner-centered giving, we do receive tenfold, 
in the expansion of knowing we have given from the wellspring of infinite supply. The giving is the receiving, though. And how powerful it is to realize that truly there can be no lack when we give from that practice. And so what came to me, though, there's a giving trifecta. And if you've taken 4T, you're familiar with this, but I, it came to me again that giving trifecta is time, talent, and treasure. And the reason it's the trifecta is because these are the areas, I believe, where we feel the most restriction because we forget the inner-centered knowing that there's always enough, so there's no depletion. Time. I just feel like that's one of our biggies. Why is it so important to give of our time? I think because we think we can't. Because we look at the outer, we look at our calendars, we look at our phones, you know, what is ours to do, our list of to-dos, our responsibilities, and we can feel overwhelmed that there is not enough time in a 24-hour day to get everything done that we need to get done or to take, be taken care of. And, of course, this belief is outer-centered giving. So where in your life are you being invited to give of your time? Where are you being called to serve? Where can you allow your focus on giving time come from an inner knowing that there's always enough of it? You know, it's considered by many modern-day scientists that time is a human construct. You know, that if we try to put time in our hands, it just slips through. Quantum physicists are talking about the illusion of time, and some suggest that the past, present, and future are all happening in nows which are individual moments that are whole, complete, and existing, each in their own right, right now. See, all we have is right now, 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 now. So how can that support our conversation about not having enough time? All we have is right now, right now, right now. And when we're focused on right now, we're certainly not fretting over the past or what ifs in the future. And that's usually where our anxiety and scarcity conversation originates, isn't it? So living in the present now and giving from that place is inner-centered giving. It comes from a place of fullness versus lack. And talent. I'm looking at a room of incredibly talented people. You all have a unique gift to give. And where are you called to express your gift and talents, to expand your awareness of who you are, and to bless the world. And I had an example of that this week. Um, unless you do administrative work here or you're a musician and make a copy or whatever, you probably have not experienced our copy machine. Um, just um, at the beginning of the year, we traded in the, our previous model to upgrade to the next advanced model, and it's co actually costing us less per month. But I swear, I think if we programmed this thing, it could probably fix my breakfast. I mean, really. It is an incredible machine. It really is. It's an incredible machine. Well, the, 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 the little glitch that happened over the last couple weeks is that my work computer kind of had to have a serious reboot. And then I bought a new home computer that I also wanted to connect to it. And for the life of Edie and me, we could not get that dadgum computer hooked up to these new computers. And if you know anything about Edie, Edie has an incredible balance of right and left brain. The woman is incredible. And she worked so hard to get this. And I did, which or usually create more of a mess than anything. But then the, the divine idea came. Let's call Keith. <laughs> I mean, duh. Let's call Keith Mounts. He's on vacation this week, bless his heart. And I swear, within 10 minutes, Keith had fixed the problem. And, and Edie and I are like, seriously? But see, this is such a great example to me of giving inner sin, in, I know it's hard to say, inner centered giving, say that 10 times, inner centered giving. Inner centered giving that's just based on, you know, I'm here to share my gifts and talents and to be a blessing. 
To me, that is Keith and so many of you in this community. So he came, he heard the call loudly, Yay! and he gave. All right, so treasure, giving our money. And I, <laughs> I don't think there's another place where we feel more yikey than when we give our money. Because what we've done is we've given money the power to determine the level of enjoyment and, you know, how we experience life. And I, I, I know if you guys just want to just say, oh, we've heard this story. But I tell you, my life transformed when I started tithing 10% of my income. And it was a big, big, biggie, biggie, big, big leap. Because at the time, I was unemployed. And I was receiving unemployment. And the reason I, I, I love tithing so much is that it called me, when the rubber meets the road, it called me into an expression of faith and knowing the truth of what I am more than anything else because of the power at the time I had given money to determine my happiness. And so I speak to you again just to encourage you to whatever's on your heart to give to where you are spiritually fed you know, and if you're feeling tight, there's an adage that says, when things get tight, something's got to give. It just works. Eric Butterworth said, no matter how great or how desperate the need, within every person is a wellspring of life, which is readily available, if we can just give way to it. You know, folks, there's an infinite abundance that's you, that lives you, that breathes you, that is you, that's everywhere present. And what Eric Butterworth is trying to tell us to do is to give way to it. You know, it's not about the outer calls, really. It's your inner call to give and your inner faith that expresses when you give from your inner knowing of this truth. That infinite abundance is the truth of you. It's the truth of life and it's the truth of the world. And boy, right now we can see lots of circumstances out there that appear differently. But the reason that I'm talking to you about this right now is so that we can leave here with a, a deeper claiming of the truth of what we are and what's available to us. Think give as a way to live from the inside out. St. Francis of Assisi said, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive. So this week, I just invite you to reflect on where you give from. Inner-centered, outer-centered, it's, it's not wrong. It's just an opportunity to possibly deepen your perspective, your knowing and claiming of all that you are. And where are you being called to give of your time, talent, and treasure? And can you do this from an inner-centered place? versus outer centered. Give way to the flow. And so I have updated the affirmation from what you're going to see on this slide, so I'm just going to ask you to repeat after me, okay? I give from an inner knowing of infinite abundance. Together, I give from an inner knowing of infinite abundance. I bless and am blessed in abundant ways. And so it is. Amen.